Hello, this is Eileen, the environmental educator. And in this video, we're going to talk about something that's happening down there in Florida, which is a massive 5,000 mile wide seaweed blob that's heading towards Florida. It's a sargassum bloom, and it could be one of the largest in history. It is so large that it is visible from space, and it is heading towards the Gulf Coast. And yeah, it is in a bunch of uh, headlines. Here's ABC7. Again, the 5,000 mile long seaweed bloom. Um, a giant seaweed blob, twice the width of the U.S., takes aim at Florida. And uh, here's NBC, a giant seaweed bloom that can be seen from space, threatened beaches in Florida and Mexico, and actually, as we'll see, uh, the Caribbean too. Um, the massive blob of smelly seaweed could mean trouble for Florida beach vacations, which also means the economy. And uh, right here, uh, Strange Sound says, you can't go to the beach. Toxic red tide is back to Florida's Gulf Coast with thousands of fish, dead fish covering water and beaches. So right here, here, here is... Um, all of those, well, some of all of those dead fish right there in the water. Um, and so, yeah, they say tens of thousands of dead fish are washing up on the southwest Florida beaches due to red tide, um, according to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. So uh, here's a video. Shows numerous dead fish washed up in Venice. And uh, one is is a... a, a a grouper which can weigh up to 800 pounds. So there's a picture of that in one of these articles here. Um, the red tide is a type of harmful algae bloom that occurs when colonies of algae grow out of control and produce toxins that can kill marine life, according to the um, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Red tide can also cause human illness and make the air near the water difficult to breathe. So yeah, right here, um, NW something weather, something probably Tampa Bay, um, over the next 36 hours is forecasting a high risk of respiratory irritation um, from the red tide at some beaches, and uh, conditions may vary. So, you know, check in at, at the beaches, and, and they show... They show where the areas of concern are right now. Um, the air quality is so terrible, you can't go to the beach. Help us save the state of Florida. How can we be the best if we can't breathe, enjoy our beaches, or have visitors enjoy them? And right, I mean, here's, you know, a, a big fish, maybe one of those 800-pounders they were talking about, and, and more dead fish just lying around here. And so, the, yeah, the Goliath Groper, I, I guess the red tide is uh, striking hard. Uh, so that, that's some more pictures of them there. Um, according to um, FWC, which is Fish Wildlife uh, Conservation Commission, maybe, just one C at the end, but <laughs> two Cs in words. Um, according to them, um, Kill, fish kills and respiratory irritation suspected to be related to the red tide have been reported in multiple counties. And here's uh, some of the ones that they list. So, yeah, this is uh, going on in Florida right now. You might not especially want to be at these beaches. And in this article here, uh, Fox Weather says that the blob doubled in size in December and again in January. Um, and, and while the amount decreased in the Atlantic, 6.1 million tons still float in the ocean, headed for beaches, uh, the Caribbean, and the Gulf of Mexico. So, yeah, the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico affected too. It says that... Um, it's the second largest amount ever recorded in the month of February, and it could fill 3,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. So, they're, and they're trying to uh, find a use for the um, brown marine microalgae. 
And, and here's, uh, you know, the seaweed just, just lying on the beach. And uh, I guess when it gets out of the water is when it starts decomposing and rotting. And that's when a lot of the problems happen. And uh, when, when this the seaweed uh, that they call sargasm is, uh, it's when it's in the ocean, it, it's a moving habitat for creatures like um, crabs and eels and shrimp and fish. But after a couple of days on shore, sargasm starts to decompose and release um, notorious and stinking gas such as ammonia and hydrogen sulfide, both of which are pollutants to the air and water. Once these pollutants are accumulated in the aquatic environment, and reach concentrations above thresholds, they are poisonous to most fish. And right there, that's a pretty nasty picture. We'll go by that. So um, the gas has caused respiratory problems for beachgoers, along with rashes and blisters. And uh, a, a study shows that hospitalization rates increase during sargasm season. And so how do you get rid of this uh, noxious seaweed? Well, uh, it costs millions to remove, and, and yeah, they, they go out with these big trucks and get it off of the beach here. Uh, Fort Lauderdale spent $250,000 a year to haul seaweed from their four miles of beach to a landfill. Now the city composts it and use it, uses the nutrient-rich soil for plantings and parks and along boulevards. But here you can see it just floating in the ocean and you know that that's just a small part of it because as we said it's it's visible from space so um they they got some issues down there on those otherwise beautiful florida beaches and, and down here this is an in uh playa, de, playa del carmen that's uh just a little north of tulum kind of south of cancun north of tulum and um yeah they're and getting it out of the water down there. So this article says, in open water, these giant mats of algae are mostly harmless and even have some benefits, including serving as habitat for certain fish and crustaceans and absorbing carbon dioxide. But ocean currents are pushing the sargasm west, causing hundreds of tons of seaweed to wash up on beaches across the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. There it can choke corals, wreak havoc on coastal ecosystems and diminish water and air quality as it rots. So uh, Brian Barnes from the University of South Florida's College of Marine Science said that even if it's just in our coastal waters, it can block intake valves for things like power plants or desalination plants. Marinas can get completely inundated and boats can't navigate through it. It can um, really threaten critical infrastructure. So, yeah, that, that can be costly, too. And uh, last summer, uh, the Virgin Islands declared a state of emergency after an unusually high quantities of sargasm caused water shortages on St. Croix. And, and it says here that, uh, you know, the sargasm invasions can stifle tourism and removing hundreds of tons from um, of algae from beaches is costly. Yeah, right. I mean, they just have these big bulldozers out there working to get this off the beaches. And this, the Hill article says, uh, the Gulf Coast is already grappling with the bloom amid the busy uh, spring break tourism season. The red tide has caused dead fish to wash ashore in droves. And while the risk of respiratory um, irritation to humans has canceled events and driven beachgoers away. So yeah, that is costly tourism dollars. And this um, ABC7 article at the end here, it says that um, if it's not cleaned up immediately, it can literally suffocate wildlife. If you have a turtle or a turtle's nest on the beach you and you have a huge thick blanket on the turtle nest, the young turtles will have a hard time surviving. So this, um, this algae bloom, seaweed bloom, red toxic tide is um, making Florida its home right now. And, and it's doing some not so pleasant things. So I just thought I'd make you aware of that. And if you have 
plans to go to the beach anytime soon, <laughs> check out the um, the forecast for the red toxic tide and stay tuned, people.